Lori Garrett, the author of the absolutely iconic book, uh, uh, The Coming Plague, uh, drops by to discuss the, uh, the disaster of the Trump administration in, in trying to deal with what it looks like is going to be probably the largest public health crisis of our lifetimes. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Um, your thoughts on, uh, and this seems to be the, uh, and, and, and again, correct me if you think I'm wrong or being hysterical here, seems to be, or probably is, since this Air Force base was 10 miles from the town where this woman who's in the hospital now got sick, and there's no known way that she got it. It seems to me like one, maybe one of these people that uh, HHS sent in there um, you know, went shopping in town, touched a door handle, she comes along, she touches the same door handle, and boom, now she's in the hospital. Does that make sense? Well, Tom, let me step back for a minute. You know, a month ago, our number one narrative was attacking China because Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party did, in fact, cover up the full extent of their Wuhan epidemic, and we are facing this crisis in the world because the Chinese Communist Party leadership put party loyalty to the Communist Party above stopping an epidemic and saving lives. Now, today, we have Mulvaney and Pompeo and the CPAC meeting all saying, and Fox News last night ranting, uh, echoing the voice of Rush Limbaugh, all saying this is a hoax. The word is hoax. Right. And they, Mulvaney went further to say, the Democrats and the liberal media have run out of things to attack the president for because they lost on impeachment and they lost on the Mueller report. So now they're creating an epidemic hoax and attacking the competence of the administration. Now, oh which is worse? Which is worse? The Communist Party politicizing the outbreak in Wuhan and imperiling the whole world or the Republican Party backing a president who is absolutely insistent that there's nothing to worry about here. There's nothing behind the curtain, folks. America is somehow invulnerable to something that is threatening the whole rest of the world. The incompetence and the um, nightmare of this is staggering. Politics has no place in an epidemic. I don't care whether it's communist politics or Republican politics. Get it off the shelf. We need competence. And we need to save lives. Yeah. Yeah, Mick Mulvaney at his uh, CPAC speech actually said uh, they're hyping this to bring down the president. I mean, this, this, is, uh, this is crazy. So to my theory about community transmission in this uh, California patient, your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not in the middle of that investigation, of course, so I don't want to second guess anything that the California investigators are coming up with. Mm. There obviously was community transmission. And... It does seem highly coincident, at least, that the uh, folks that had come from the Princess Cruise Liner were just 10 miles from the site of this index case. It would be, um, it would be cavalier to ignore that possibility, is the way I would put it. Okay. Um, can, you, can you just speak to, you use the phrase community transmission, and, you know, most of us are not public health experts like you are. Um, it's not a phrase that I think most people have heard before, and they're just starting to hear now. What does that mean? So there's, there's two different key dynamics going on in this epidemic as it becomes a pandemic. Uh, I would argue it already is a pandemic. Yes. Um, one dynamic is cases basically seeding from the source, meaning uh, individuals that are traveling from China or have been in China bringing a case, an isolated case, to some place that doesn't have any, any circulation of the virus. Right. So that is what we were seeing, you know, maybe 10, 15 days ago, as most of the world dynamic outside of China. But now what we're seeing all over the world is spread within communities that, where it no longer has any connection to China at all. And in fact, in some of the outbreaks, there's no detectable original source in any way, as far back as you can trace it, connected to China. Right. This happened in, Italian, in Italy, too, right? The entire outbreak. Yeah. It's not exactly proven, but it does appear that it all started with a business meeting that an individual took over lunch with another individual in Milan, and over the course of a lunch conversation, the, other, the second guest at the table had been in China, 
a whole month. Yep. Lori, your, 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 your phone just faded out. I'm sorry, we missed your last sentence. I'm sorry. A whole, a whole month passed. Uh, before of uh, incubating virus before then the second individual uh, goes into a hospital outside Milan and then it explodes inside the hospital due to a lack of appropriate infection control. And I think now this is the real alarm button. And rather than dwell on politics, I want to save lives here, Tom. Mm-hmm. So here's the alarm button I would like to push right now. So everybody who is listening to this show, who is a health practitioner, whether you're a dentist, you're a, uh, you write prescriptions, you're a nurse, a doctor, you administer a hospital, whatever your role may be. You need to make sure that your entire staff is not only trained in proper infection control, but from now on assumes anybody coming into your office, into your practice, into your hospital might be infected. And that means you have to up your game on your infection control because what we're seeing all over the world is that the real kind of explosions of cases happens inside of medical facilities because doctors and nurses have to be up close and personal with patients. But in routine practice, you don't wear PPEs. In routine practice, you don't wear uh, the super heavy-duty surgical masks. In routine practice, you don't wear two pairs of latex gloves. And in routine practice, you don't meet your patients wearing a surgical gown. But Everybody, I don't care whether your practices that put you in close contact with patients, you need now to train your staff. You don't know. You're not going to see a patient with a big coronavirus uh, on your face. You need to be careful. I was in. Uh, I'm. I was. I'm on book tour this uh, last week and this week. I'm uh, leaving for Chicago tomorrow, and last week I was uh, signing books in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Seattle. Um, I know that my flight from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Uh, I'm, I don't want to name the airline, but there were uh, a, a fairly large number of people, maybe 15 or 20 people, who had come off a flight from Japan and transferred onto this flight. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I should be worried about that or not. Um, I'm guessing that my flight from San Francisco back to Portland or up to Seattle uh, probably had people who were con- connecting on international flights. It, with the SARS epidemic, it seemed like airports and hotels were one of the major vectors. What should people do? What should I do? Uh, you know, as I get on an airplane tomorrow morning um, to keep myself safe and keep people around me safe. Yes, I do a lot of travel as well, and I, you can imagine how many people call me to say, you know, my son is about to go to fill in the country. Should right. they go? Right. So here, here's my advice that I'm, I've been giving to everybody. First, there's the just pain in the neck aspect, which is flights are getting canceled. Countries are closing airports. So when you book a flight, be sure you get flight insurance now so that you don't get stiffed with the bill and you have a possibility of changing your flight um, because there are going to be a lot of disruptions now in the entire travel industry. As for safety, we have no evidence so far of transmission within North America on flight routes. But isn't that because we only have 400 test kits in the whole country? Well, that's a lot of problem, Tom, and it's huge. Yeah. You know, Japan, South Korea, Singapore... Even Switzerland has tested thousands of people, and everywhere they test, they end up finding cases. Maybe not anything in huge numbers, maybe one here and one there. But the point is, there's community transmission. In the United States, um, we still don't have an off-site Yeah, Lori, your phone is breaking well, up again. I don't, I don't know where you were standing when it was working, but I'm, go I'm back, sorry. Go I'm back sitting, there. I'm sitting. I'm sitting still. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah. Who well, knows? It's just your cell provider it's, then. Anyhow, it's continue. This is our, our third world telephones. Yeah. Um, uh, in the United States, uh, you. I've I've completely lost you, Lori. So. Well, I'm. Oh, I'm now you're back. Okay. Not moving. I'm sitting still. Yeah. No, I get it. It's it's the phone provider. So. Um, in summary, what do we do? We're going to hit a break here in a minute and a half. Uh, everybody, 
to take this very seriously. Do not count on to be there for you. It helps. Please go along with them. Meanwhile, teach your children infection control. Mm. Your office staff infection control. Yeah. Protect yourself. I, I get, Lori. I'm sorry. We, we, we're getting, you know, one word out of six here. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wrap this. But you know, Lori Garrett, uh, I know you can hear me. Thank you so much for being with us. I have so much respect for you and for the work that you've done over the years, and for the voice of sanity you bring to this. And I'm, I'm grateful that you dropped by. Uh, and thank and you. Thank you. And I commend people to, I uh, commend your book, uh, The Coming Plague, and all of your books to uh, everybody who's watching. They're really, really worth checking out. Uh, Lori Garrett's website is Laurie, L-A-U-R-I-E, Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T dot com. And you can tweet her at uh, Lori underscore Garrett. That's her Twitter handle. So uh, check it out. She's, uh, her writing is spectacular. Uh, that book, The Coming Plague, when I read that, uh, I think it was you know well over a decade, maybe even two decades ago. Um, it. It, I don't want to say it scared me. What it did is it gave me a, 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 an extraordinary understanding that I didn't have prior to that of how, basically how epidemics happen, uh, specifically at, in, at a granular level.